Okay, so welcome to part 3 of this video on uh, magnetic resonance imaging. Right, so basically there are many different types of uh, photons, basically. So, um, electromagnetic waves, the theory that underlies electromagnetic waves is quite complicated. And basically, this formula is not too difficult. You can kind of view um, electromagnetic waves as being a particle, and in this case it's quite helpful to think of it as being a particle. So uh, often the particle associated with an electromagnetic wave is denoted a photon. Right, so it's probably easier to think of this as just a particle coming in and delivering energy to uh, this, um, to this uh, proton, basically, that will allow it to change into the higher energy state, i.e disalign its magnetic, um, uh, magnetic dipole moment with the external magnetic field. And basically there are loads of different types of photon. They can have all different frequencies and um, depending upon the frequency associated with the photon, uh, its energy uh, is equal to um, a constant, Planck's constant times that frequency. So its energy will increase with its frequency. So the electromagnetic spectrum um, consists of radio waves at the far um, at the far extreme where the frequency is very 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 uh, high so this is um, sorry frequency is very very low in the case of radio waves uh, the wavelength is very high so radio waves have a very very low frequency and then it goes on uh, you have uh, then infrared no not infrared next microwaves after after um, radio waves uh, then you have infrared. Uh, so these are get this is frequency getting higher, infrared. Then you have visible light. And then after that visible light, you have UV rays. And then as you continue going on, you get to X-rays. I'll draw them down here. X-rays. And then finally, gamma rays. Okay, and then uh, basically this is shows how um, frequency is getting bigger. So as frequency gets bigger, uh, the energy delivered by these gets larger. And basically, as you can see, they become more and more dangerous. So radio waves aren't very dangerous. Microwaves are dangerous only because, um, well, mobile phones emit microwaves. Obviously, if you put yourself in a microwave, it wouldn't end nicely. Uh, but, um, uh, sorry, I mean, when I am said microwave there, I mean like a um, a microwave oven. Uh, it wouldn't end nicely, but that's because of the way microwaves interact with water. They're not particularly high energy as far as uh, electromagnetic radiation is concerned. Right, so basically this, this proton cannot, cannot move to this higher energy state unless the energy difference provided by the photon is exactly the right amount of energy. So you might ask, well, why can't it? Why can't this work? Uh, if um, why can't it work if I give it a higher uh, frequency radiation? I I give it more energy than it needs to do this transition. But it turns out that to turn this photon, it to make this photon disalign with the external magnetic field and align its um, align its magnetic dipole moment in exactly the opposite orientation. What you have to do is you have to give it the exact right amount of energy. So there is an exact frequency, basically, of radiation that you have to fire at this proton in order to um, get the, give it the correct amount of energy. So all you need to do is say, well, the photon's energy needs to equal this energy difference. Therefore, H nu needs to equal delta E. So the frequency of the radiation needs to equal whatever the energy difference between these two states is, divided by Planck's constant. Okay, so if you fire that correct frequency of um, electromagnetic radiation at the proton, it will then transition up into the higher energy state. Okay, and that phenomenon of transferring from the low energy state into the high energy state is known as nuclear magnetic resonance. So that is the phenomenon of nuclear magnetic resonance. And basically, uh, it's called nuclear because these protons are in the nucleus of atoms. It's called magnetic because you've got the protons in an external magnetic field. And it's called resonance because uh, when the photon uh, that you're firing at this 
um, at this proton is exactly the right frequency, then what happens is that the photon is said to resonate with uh, the proton, and it, it then elevates its energy up, and only if it's exactly the right frequency will this resonance occur. Right, so we are now in a position to start describing uh, the process of uh, MRI. Right, so uh, the MRI imaging machines are quite terrifying. What they are is a huge, great circular sort of um, cylinder. So I will try and draw this. So a great circular cylinder, like so. <laughs> right. And uh, basically, you have a hole down the middle where the person goes in. So let's say um, I will draw that like so. Here you go. Right, so what you basically have is a person lying on a bed here. So let's say this is our person lying on a bed. And they are going to go into this MRI scanner. Right, and what the MRI scanner is going to do is it's going to create an external magnetic field all around them, basically. And it's very, very clever what it's going to do. It's not going to create the magnetic field everywhere to be exactly the same level. It's going to make a magnetic field that varies all over the place. So in, within, this, uh, within this MRI machine here, what you're going to have is variable magnetic field everywhere. So this is the MRI machine. So inside this MRI machine, what's going to happen is that at one point the magnetic field might be that big, at another point it will, might be slightly different. So you have every single point within the um, MRI machine is going to get a slightly different uh, external magnetic field value. Okay, right. Now what happens is that uh, in this person, the, uh, there is a lot of water. People ha are made up of a lot of water. Now, water has, um, has an, is made up of an oxygen molecule bound to two hydrogen molecules. Now, these hydrogens in the water have protons in. Wa hydrogen's usual form is just a proton with a single electron around it, like so. And basically, in the water molecule, what happens is that hydrogen um, and oxygen share their electrons. So hy hydrogen's one electron goes into this bond and joins another um, electron from oxygen. Right. Now, these hydrogen uh, nuclei, these protons here, are extremely good at showing this nuclear magnetic resonance phenomenon. Now, you might say, but all the other are, are atoms in this person, such as the oxygen atom, won't, they've got protons in, why won't they do uh, nuclear magnetic resonance? And they will, uh, but the, um, the um, fact that the proton is in a much bigger nucleus with loads of other protons and loads of other neutrons makes it very different, makes the nuclear magnetic resonance that they undergo very different. So uh, we can do it with protons very, very easily, and it will work at much, much um, lower frequency radiation than it will. Uh, it will work at much, uh, basically you'll get this phenomenon of nuclear magnetic resonance where the protons are moving to this uh, higher energy state. You'll get that at very low frequencies of um, electromagnetic radiation, i.e. this required frequency to make that transition occur is going to be a low frequency, which means that it's going to be very safe to use. Whereas these oxygen nuclei, if we wanted to do it with those, because of the interactions with the neutrons and the protons, you need much higher frequency radiation. So we don't want to do it with oxygen, basically. Okay, but hydrogen in water is fantastic. So what happens is we create this graded magnetic field through there. Now what happens is that if a proton is at each... A prot if water molecules are within this human, and the water molecule is at that point where there is an external magnetic field, then the protons are, at that, are, are feeling an external magnetic field. So what will happen is they will all try to align with the magnetic field at that point. Now, when you send, what you now do is the, elect is the MRI machine sends in loads of radio waves of a certain frequency. So it uses electromagnetic radiation of a fixed frequency, and it's in the radio waves uh, 
portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. So it has some fixed frequency which it emits. Now, if that proton is at the exact right um, exact right strength of the magnetic field, then it will resonate with that frequency. And this is something that I didn't stress, I don't think, when we, w we were looking at um, nuclear magnetic resonance, that this energy difference between the um, low energy state and high energy state is dependent upon the strength of the external magnetic field. If the magnetic field is very, very strong, then the energy difference that it takes to move the electron uh, from being having its magnetic dipole moment aligned with the external magnetic field to having its magnetic dipole moment disaligned with the magnetic field is going to be greater basically so at all of the if we've made the magnetic field slightly different strengths all over the place through this uh, mri machine then uh, the energy difference to take the protons from the low energy state to the high energy state is going to be different everywhere, basically. So, this frequency will only work at a particular point where the magnetic field strength is just right, basically. And I should stress that you don't literally give every single point in here a different uh, magnetic field strength. Instead, what you'll do is you'll take tiny little boxes within the ma uh, boxes of air, basically volumes within the MRI scanner, and you'll ascribe give make sure that all of those have the same magnetic field strength there. Okay, so any water in there, any protons in that little box of the MRI scanner will um, will feel a certain external magnetic field and uh, all of those protons will align with that magnetic field and then they'll require a certain amount of energy to take them uh, from being in their aligned state to being in their perfectly disaligned state and, um, and uh, if the uh, frequency of this radiation is that the, this set frequency of radiation is just right for that, uh, that magnetic field strength, then uh, what will happen is that those protons in that little box will move from being in the low energy state to being in the high energy state. Okay, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.